commends church for supporting fight against insecurity. Anambra Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare empowers a physically challenged beggar. President Tinubu confirms removal of oil subsidy. Both mishap claims for lives in Italy. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Choko Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Anambra State Government has debunked viral video on social media platforms purporting that Governor Chukuma Soludo was thrown out of VIP sitting position at the presidential inauguration ceremony. A statement signed by the press secretary to the governor, Mr. Christian Aburime, described the video as very mischievous and misleading and hard work of mischief makers who derive pleasure in misinforming the general public. The statement explained that the video shows Governor Chukuma Saludo arrived in the Ego Square for the presidential swearing in ceremony in Abuja and was courteously redirected to, by protocol officials to the position rightfully reserved for him at the other side of the VVIP's sitting position. It pointed out that redirecting invited guests to their rightful sitting position is neither an issue nor a condescending act and made clear that Governor Saludo remains one of the few governors that was respectful, respectfully honored and invited officially to attend the presidential swearing in ceremony. The statement called on the general public to disregard the trending video. Governor Chukwu Masoludo has called for concerted efforts in the ongoing fight against insecurity and commended the church for its role in that regard. Governor Saludo, who made the call during a Thanksgiving service to mark the end of the third session of the Sixth Synod of Diocese of Aguata, held at Holy Trinity Church, Ibuku, equally charged the church not to relent in its responsibility of improving the moral tone of the society. A correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports that the theme for the Synod is divine principles of transformation, stewardship. We have the details. Presented by the Commissioner for Agriculture, Dr. Foster Ihe Jofo, Governor Soludo commended the leadership of the Diocese of Aguata for all its programs aimed at creating peace and security. He urged the church to continue to collaborate with the state government in its efforts towards bringing social amenities, especially in the area of education and human capital development. The importance of the Synod cannot be overemphasized, cannot be overstated. Because it does give the leadership, membership, and stakeholders in the church the opportunity to take stock, look at the achievements in the past year, and provide solutions to challenges that are still lingering. The president of the Synod and Bishop of Aguata Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Ezofo, said the Synod availed them the opportunity to discuss programs of the diocese for the year, while urging the delegates to put into practice what they have garnered for the good of mankind and the society. The Synod preacher and Bishop of Amichi Diocese, Right Reverend Ephraim Ikako, who spoke on the topic, The Challenges Before Us, Faithful Stewardship, said that the Synod team is apt and challenging, and if put into practice, Nigeria will be transformed positively. He explained that the greatest challenge in the church, public service, governance, and Nigeria is the absence of faithful stewardship, lamenting that at present, evil is being celebrated and good is rejected, and called on the people to allow the Holy Spirit direct their daily lives for them to overcome temptation. Bishop Ikako charged Christians to strive to be faithful and courageous stewards and focus on pleasing God instead of men. 
But if I young na ye bring angle campus, season of na ye one which you get the meaning of the season, the message of the season, the purpose of the season, and the realization of that season in your life. In separate speeches, a retired bishop of the province of the Niger and pioneer bishop of Newi Diocese, Most Reverend Godwin Opala, said the synod will not only enhance the physical and spiritual growth of the church and host community, but also transform the society through the teachings of the bishop and the synod preacher. The accountant general of Anambra State, Dr. Chukwu Diokoli, in his remarks, emphasized that it is important as a person or public servant to become a faithful steward, stressing that accountability and transparency should be placed at work. Also speaking, Archdeacon Ibufu Archdeacon Ray, Variable Emmanuel Wanfo, thanked the diocese and Bishop Ezofo for the synod in Ibufu. According to him, more souls will be won for God. Contributing, the Chairman Synod Central Planning Committee, Sir Emma Obaloka, and wife of the diocesan chancellor, Lady Njidi Obiora, said the program was impactful. The president, Agwata Diocesan Women's Ministry, Mrs. Chinyere Ezofo, the assistant legal team, traditional ruler of Ibufu, Igwe Alexander Azike, wife of the former vice president of Nigeria, Mrs. Ifoma Ekweme, former president general, joint council of knights, church of Nigeria, Sir Isaiah Ezezika, and president general Ibufu community, Sir Chris Ike, among others, raised the occasion. Thanksgiving, prayer, cutting of the synod cake, and planting of the trees signifying the bread and growth of the gospel at Holy Trinity Church Ibufu climaxed the event. One of the beggars caught during the raid which took place in Oka on Wednesday has been financially empowered by the Anambra State Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare. We have details of the report. Financial support given to the beggar is part of the ministry's mandate in ensuring that vulnerable beggars caught in the streets are empowered to start up some businesses. Handing over the cash to the physically challenged beggar, Ms. Ifo Machufu, a native of Otolo Newi, the Women and Social Welfare Commissioner, Mrs. Ifi Obinabo, who noted that the support came from the wife of the governor of Anambra State, Nonye Soludo, advised her to make good use of the money given to her. Mrs. Obinabo used the medium to warn Ms. Chufu that if she is caught again in the street begging, she will be charged to court. Appreciating the governor's wife and the commissioner, Ms. Chufu promised to use the fund judiciously in order to better her life. Two suspected quack doctors, Mrs. Anayo Okwara of Brightland Hospital and Maternity Limited, and Mr. Igwe Obona of Favor of God Hospital and Maternity, operating illegally in Alo, Idemele South local government area, have been arrested by the Anambra State Government. Our health correspondent, Chibuzo Okoye, has details. It was led by the Anambra State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Afam Odinike, accompanied by some security men as well as members of the Anambra Joint Enforcement Team, led by East State Coordinator, retired Air Vice Marshal Ben Chiobi, who was represented by the Director of Operations of the team, Mr. Chuhoma Opalezuhu, recalled that recently the Anambra State Ministry of Health shut down the two hospitals and another one at Adazienu Community for operating and declared the operators wanted. While Mr. Okwara was arrested, by a lot vigilante men, Mr. Bonner was arrested by the commissioner and his team. Speaking during the exercise, Dr. Obidike, who narrated that the ministry has already closed five hospitals in the state for operating illegally and being run by quacks, thanked the immediate past and current president's general of our community for their hard work, which resulted in the success of the exercise. The commission insisted that Anamda is not a place for quacks to practice and noted that they are determined to eliminate quackery in the state. Dr. Obidike urged the Anambra to be vigilant and equally called on various communities in the state to emulate what our community has done by monitoring what is going on in their areas. He commended Governor Chukuma Soludu for giving them ordinary support they desire to excel in the assignment and revealed that the suspects will be charged to court for them to answer for their crimes. I want to tell people that uh, Anambra state is no longer safe for parts and uh, we are determined to eliminate it totally because deaths are irreversible cause. Like any death that occurred cannot come back again. So we'll continue to, in fact, if it's 
this is one of the things we are not pushing back on. And unfortunately, some of them try to come and bribe us. The President General of Alo People's Convention, Chief Emmanuel Ojuhu, told the ABS that after much complaints and incessant deaths in Brightland Hospital Limited, they had a cause to query Mr. Okora's medical claims and discovered that all his certificates were forged. Hence, they are letter to the State Ministry of Health and thanked Dr. Obidike for his swift response. People are not coming to hospital to die. People are coming to hospital for their lives to be saved. But that's not the case. And um, I tell you, this is just the beginning. We are going to clean up this time. Mr. Okora claimed that he's a homopathic doctor, but agreed that his certificates were forged when grilled by the commissioner. Are you a medical doctor? I'm a okay, I'm a so, uh, I'm a so, what are you treating? As a homopathic, what are you treating? I'm treating serious illness. Serious illness. So, the medical doctors treat serious illness. I'm treating disease. 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 Or have any medical knowledge, he also uses his facility at Adazin as both a hospital and nursing school, where students pay between 70 and 100,000 naira each to study nursing without any teacher except himself, as confirmed by some students' nurses met at the facility. The director of medical services, Anambra State Ministry of Health, Dr. Ugochuku Chukulobelo, was also present during the exercise. From Alo, in the Middle South local government area, this is Tibu Zokoye for ABS News. 11 open heart surgeries were successfully performed at Dame Irene Okosa Memorial Hospital Orifite, while over 1,000 persons received free medical treatment, courtesy of Sir Oko Emeka Okosa Foundation in conjunction with the VUM Foundation USA. Our staff reporter, Gochuko Rano, who covered the medical fair report that people suffering from various ailments, common tropical diseases, and eye problems were also treated in the May 2023 edition. According to the foundation, 11 open heart surgeries were successfully carried out, and all the 11 patients who came from different parts of the country are in stable condition. In an interview with the ABS, the general manager of Sir Emeko Kosa Foundation, Ms. Amanda Obidike, said the open heart surgery lasted for two weeks, saying that the foundation always make conscious efforts to have a community medical care. After open heart surgeries, where general practitioners give free treatment to people in orifice and environs, adding that an ophthalmologist was integrated in this year's medical mission. After finding out that some patients who were treated last year complained of eye problem to the general practitioners, Ms. Obidike unveiled that 1,000 people were targeted in the primary health care delivery, stating that the motivation behind the gesture was to give back to the society. We concentrated on open heart surgery, uh, but we also have this tradition of having this community medical fair, especially, you know, for um, residents that are, you know, around the foundation and in Orifiti. Mm -hmm. The media manager of the foundation, Sir Ose Lokofo, said the foundation rolled out programs to assist the people, hoping that the gesture will motivate other affluent individuals to assist the downtrodden. This is the sixth medical fair we're having, right? And the surgery, and you have, this is the third surgery mission. That is uh, the uh, medical mission of the Vum Foundation to our, you know, uh, uh, cardiothoracic hospital, right? So um, a lot is happening. It's costing us millions and millions of naira, right? But uh, we're not regretting it because. The, to God be the glory. A general medical practitioner at the Dem Irene Okwesa Memorial Hospital, Orifite, Dr. Kelechi Ahamba, who said they recorded massive turnout of patients suffering from various ailments, including common tropical diseases, observed the excitement and rush from the people to assess the free Medicare, while an ophthalmologist, Dr. Chikeze Ebemo, said people are diagnosed of various eye problems ranging from cataracts, conjunctivitis, among others, attributed
contributing some to feeding habit and advised people to take plenty of fruits. Some of the beneficiaries of the free Medicare, Mr. Edmond Amamchuku, Ezetuku Akosa, Mrs. Ozioma Okoye and Ngozi Madubobi, thanked the donor for ensuring their wellness and prayed God to bless and replenish his pocket. Adam on the national scene, President Bola Tenobo has announced that his administration will remove the subsidy on petroleum products. The president said there was no provision for subsidy in the national budget from June 2023, and therefore it stands removed. Speaking at his inauguration, Tinebo revealed that his administration targets minimum GDP growth of 6% annually. He also promised to lead the country with compassion and amity towards all. And to keep smile on the faces of Nigerian children, Anocha local government area has joined the rest of the world uh, to celebrate the 2023 Children's Day. The event was held at the local government headquarters, Nene. Correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports. In his address, Mr. Ozo said the vision of the present administration is to create conducive environment for learning, provide all necessary incentive and encouragement that will see children become the best in their respective chosen fields. He explained that the state government plays high premium on human capital development with the children as the main focus, adding that it will leave no stone unturned in investing huge resources on child education. Thanking Governor Soludo for investing in education, including employing over 5,000 teachers, Mr. Ozo urged the children to avoid truancy and keeping bad friends to avoid juvenile delinquency while calling on parents to seek the happiness of their children always without compromising discipline. With this one or two skills, some of our, uh, some of our children will be busy instead of engaging in all those vices. And it's not being result because they appreciate the state government for bringing them on board to have an interest uh, in the youth because the youth is the future of tomorrow. Chairman on the occasion, Barrister Peter Emene, said the day is special to celebrate children who are the future leaders, reminding parents and guardians to train their children and wars in the fear of God to become exemplary in the society. To respect their parents, respect their elders, respect the communities and the laws, you know, covering the communities, no child should be involved in crime. After the match passed, Regal Secondary School, Nri, won the first position and Ojiako Memorial Grammar School, Adaziani, came second at the secondary school category for primary schools. Ezani Obidigo Primary School, Neni, merged the winner. Why Central School Obeledu came second and Ojiako Memorial Primary School Adazin Nubu came third. The event also featured presentation of prizes to the students. On the foreign scene, four people have died after a boat carrying more than 20 passengers, including tourists sank in strong winds on Lake Maggiore in northern Italy. The boat overturned between the towns of Sesto Calende and Arona Italian Media Say. Five people were taken to hospital after being rescued. Unconfirmed reports in Italian media say the boat's passengers were British, Italian and Israeli. Attilio Fontana, president of the Lombardy region, said the incident was due to bad weather. According to Italian news outlets, the boat had been carrying about 25 people who were celebrating a birthday when a storm developed over the lake, later turning it into a small hurricane. The boat capsized and sank soon afterwards. 
Everyone on board went into the water, but many of the passengers swam ashore or were rescued by other boats. So unfortunate. Uh, now on sports news, the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, and the Interim Management Committee, IMC, of the Nigerian Premier Football League have congratulated sports minister Sunday Dare, FIFA Executive Committee member Amaju Penik and Napoli striker Victor Osime on their national awards, while Dare had been confirmed with the prestigious commander of the order on the Niger, CON, by President Muhammad Buhari. Penik got the officer of the order of the Federal Republic OF, OFR award, and Osime received the member order of the Federal Republic. The NFF President Ibrahim Gusan said the national award of CON conferred on Chief Sunday Dari goes a long way to underscore the character, diligence, competence and drive he brought to the job, noting that Chief Dari worked assiduously to reposition Nigeria's sports generally. Speaking on Osime, Gusso said the award means that even as a football player, you can be honored by your country for exceptional service and also for the way you represent the country abroad. Congratulations to them and that's just about it. But remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television, OKA, and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again. Governor Saludo has commended church for supporting fight against insecurity. Anambra Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare has empowered physically challenged beggar. President Tinubu has confirmed removal of oil subsidy and from the foreign scene, both mishap has claimed four lives in Italy. Governor Choko Masoludo has come for total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. We thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Good morning and have a wonderful day.